Hi everyone, how are you doing? We have a little uh, technical problem with our Latin American uh, office. So hello, Ceci. Um, so uh, we are waiting for Elba to jump on, but we're gonna give it a little time. So today we're gonna be talking about face reading with mask. Um, it's weird how sometimes you ended up becoming an expert uh, from bad things happening, but I guess, just things happening and uh, you need to jump on and to try to get it as best as you can so i'm gonna see if we are live correctly it looked like we are so just want to make sure yeah we are live so thank you vanessa thank you guys um uh, so when we went to uh lockdown here in the united states on march most companies were from, I see you tomorrow to, I don't know when you're coming back to work. So what we have been doing is teaching people how to manage the video present. And the second, second thing that we have been doing a lot is helping people to how to read emotions with mask. And one of the things is most of your emotions, everything that it count on you happen in your eyes. Uh, hi, Rice. How you doing? Hi, Christine. So if I cover my mouth, I still can see what is going on with you. One of the things that we says on face reading is that now that we have a mask cover society, actually help us to pay attention where we shouldn't be paying attention before. The Duchenne smile, that is the smile that the, determine if we really engage with someone or not, happen in your eyes. If I do this, I'm not smiling. Everything happened here. Uh, from the micro expressions, the most difficult micro expression I would say is that you can read in a face, it can be contempt. But even though when somebody is doing contempt, that is this, you're gonna see the lower part of the eye flatten. So it's about practice. It's about paying attention. I always says when one of the, our senses get diminished for any reason, we start developing a new sense. So face reading in this case came extremely beneficial. We have been training first responders. We have been training people in airports, security, and places that need to be open for any reason. And how we use face reading for this. If I know how I need to communicate information to you and how you process information, I don't need to see your, your, your lower part of the face responding. So I wanna share something because I always says, one is what we says, but other thing is when people is making studies. So we're gonna start sharing the screen and I wanna make sure that it's shared. And we have the complete presentation coming on. Yeah, we have on the presentation uh, screen. Everybody can tell me if we are sharing the right one. I'm gonna check on our live that we are going. So I'm gonna teach you today how to read people with mask. And I'm gonna teach you how to do it in cells, in relationship, talk to your team or even talk to your boss. I see that we have the right screen sharing, so let's go for it. Who is the person behind the mask? But before that, I wanna give you a teaser what is gonna be our next show. For, I don't watch the news and I don't even have a TV. Be, and you see my discuss, why? Because I get overloaded. But I was going through some a news feed in my internet and I found the picture of Robert R. Redfield. Uh, he is the director of the CDC. And when I saw his face, you can see in the lower part of his mouth and like, oh my God, in 28 years of experience, I never saw a secret line as big as this guy have. This is a picture a couple of years ago. This is the picture the day he took office and this is the picture two years uh, from two years a uh, couple of weeks ago. I don't know you, but I can at least find out 20 things who have changed in his face from the first picture to the second one to the third one. 
So if you want to know how to find out when somebody is keeping secret for you, remember, face reading is not allowing you to determine if somebody's lying to you, but you can determine if somebody's a person who keeps secrets and how you communicate and take information. So if you want to know how to determine when somebody's keeping secrets to you and how those secrets are affecting you, I see you next Friday, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, same channel live how to know he, he is keeping secrets. We're gonna be talking about Robert Redfield. And when I talk to this with a couple of our uh, followers, I'm like, yes, please. So if you have any other person that you want us to read, just let us know. I've been asking information about uh, what we do and what we do it. Um, we have, one of the things is this life is great, but it's me talking to you. It's not you talking to me. So we have a Facebook group where we interact for almost two hours every Friday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, where you can ask questions when we go in deeper and when we explain different things related to what we do. So the first one is our uh, school. The second one is our consulting company. And the third one is our Facebook learning group. Again, we go in live every Friday, 5 p.m. You don't need to do anything. Just ask to be at it and you can participate. We go in ballistic and you have the chance to see the other uh, Facebook like that we have done before. And believe me, we have a lot of fun. And again, I always says, I don't know who's having more fun, myself or the students. Now, um, this article come up this week and I need to uh, say thank you to uh, my amazing team because they come out with this when I says, hey, that's what we're gonna be doing on Friday. The National Institute of Standards and Technology uh, did a study on to face reading and they found out that depending on the size, shape, on the color of the mask, AI can make mistakes. So what is happening now that some of us are um, into that too, they, we need to go to travel again, or we need to go to a bank or certain places, you are asked to take the mask off. So they've been doing a study since July to determine if um, an AI machine can read your face, can identify in you if the person on the passport or the ID is the same person that the machine read. Without mask, all the AIs testing around the world show a 0.3% mistake. I don't get it. I test most of this of the system and I work on some of them. I think that the measurement is bigger, but they found out that depending on the mass, again, and the color, the mistake can be between five to 50%. So flipping a coin, is this Susan Ivitz or is somebody else? So when I'm saying that learning how to read faces not only can help you to be safe, is to make other people safe. Because when I don't need to take my mask off, to talk to you, to work to you, to understand what is going on with you, I make us both safe. So face reading has been around us for more than 5,000 years. This is not new, just happened that it become more known since this happened. But as you can see, we are not the only ones talking about how to read faces. There are a few things that humans are better than machines are on learning and doing and applying reading emotions and identifying people, we are better. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, we ha they have a program called the Super Recognizers and in and and London, and I think you hear me talk about this, is part of the program in Scotland Yard. They found out a couple of years ago, ago when they have a, an eruption in the street and people was, wearing, uh, was covering the mask, that a CCT camera only recognized two people from the database. And suddenly one of the Scotland Yard guys says, wait a minute, I know who that guy is and that guy and that guy. So they start developing this program where they found out one person can recognize between 140 and 160 people from database. Uh, you can Google it, you can see documentaries. There are people in the United States, they can recognize a picture. For example, there are people who can see I don't know, Michael Jackson, when he was, uh, when he died, 
and they show them a picture from when he was three years old and the person can recognize. They can connect the dots between how the ears develop and the forehead. So we are not doing this here, but we read in faces. What I want to mean with this is we can, as a human, whatever has to do with emotions, recognizing features and what happened with your face better than any AI. So today is going to be a mini class than how you can do it. And believe me, I learned how to do it. I wasn't born with this gift. All the team can do it. And I have been teaching people who says it's impossible to learn it. And after 24 hours, they can start with the basic. So what we're going to be showing today is the basic. And we're going to start with ears. Why ears are so important? Ears has to do with how we intake information. And I'm sorry, I'm checking. Hello, what time is the standard time? Facebook Live. Uh, the standard time is as 4 p.m. Your time, guys, is 3 p.m. on the uh, um, Chicago time and is 1 p.m. on the West Coast and LA. So every Friday is going to be at the same time. We used to do it at 2.30. Last Friday, we couldn't do it. And we agree with all the people who follow this. The three time, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time is the best time. It's 4 p.m. Eastern and is 1 p.m. Western Standard Time. Every Friday, next week, again, we're going to be reading the CDC uh, director. Uh, my name is Susan Ivitz. This is uh, reading, reading Faces Profiling. And you can see us every Friday here either on LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube. The good news is if you are part of the reading in the class, you can ask questions and I can reply to them. If you're watching the recording at the end, you're gonna find an email and a phone number and all the ways that you can communicate and not to miss the option. So again, go back to ears. I hope that reply your questions. Uh, I use a pseudonym, so at Nisink, uh, probably destroying your name, my apologies. Going back to ears. We have around 13 things that we can read on ears. We can read the shape, the high, the earlobes. But today I'm going to teach you one thing that you need to be learning about ears. That is the principal thing is the size. Because the size of the ear determine how I need to develop and deliver information to you. You are visual, meaning that you're listening with your eyes or you're out it. I need to keep talking to you and having consistency. The second thing we're going to learn today is how high and low the ears are, meaning how fast you process information. Now, uh, because talking is not something that you only can do, you need to be seen, it's that uh, we can determine the size of the ears by making blocks. My advice to you is, if you are new to this, get a picture of anybody you know, put it in a Word document and start making lines where the head start and the head finish. And after that, talk to the person that you were profiling, that is maybe somebody you know, and ask if those characteristics are matching with the person's uh, personality. So how I measure the ears and I, realize that size it's inverted so my dyslexia i reviewed this powerpoint 17 times and now i found out then i did the slice run here we go that's me uh be unapologetically yourself that's what i always says so how we measure uh the information so you see where the two bumps of the head start that's where your head start so you don't need to be having hair or not to determine when your head start starting this to bump now your face finish in your chin even though you have a mask you can determine where the chin is finished now how we measure the ears you can make a block or a line where the ear finish and the ear start even though with mask i can determine that this person have a small ears why do you see if i grab the same block and i made it fit it fit three times, actually can fit a four time. So that means that the person have a small ears. Now, if I want to know if a person have big ears, this block should be fit 
less than three times. Meaning, if this block was up on the border, up or down, doesn't matter where it is going down the line or up the line, doesn't mean that mean that the person had big ears. Now, how is the difference? When I'm talking with a person who have a small ears, it's visual. You need to talk to them in visual ways. You need to show them. If it's a co-worker, you need to show them what they need to do. It's people who is going to do better in a Zoom meeting. Now, if it's a salesperson, uh, how you need to talk to others. You need to be really careful if you're a salesperson. Why? Because, because you're visual doesn't mean the other person that you sell into or you're communicating with, even if you're a manager, you're in a, 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 in a team, or you're doing selling, is not how you need to receive the information. It's not how you want to deliver the information. It's how the, er, the other person need to receive it. Platinum rule, took to others how they need to receive information, now how you want to receive it. That's what is so important to have the understanding what are the size of the ears. Again, in this case, it's a small. It's going to be doing better when you show them. If you need to go do a demo, do the demo. Doesn't mean that you need to be, you don't need to be in camera. The other person doesn't need to be in camera. These people is going to do it better when you, even when you need to show the numbers, make a chart, make an Excel. If you're going to talk for the first time with this person, even though if you're going to be talking on the phone, Send a document five minutes before and says to the person, open this document when we are on the call. So when you're going through the document, the person can visualize what you're saying. If you pay attention to the videos that we do in YouTube, when it says 60% of X and this, the, the, the number 60% show in the video is for the visual people who need to relate what I'm saying for what I'm showing. So if you're selling to this person, show them. If it's your boss, show them. If it's your coworker, show them. If you're on a date, it's a person who's going to be stimulated for what you do. And they're going to be paying a lot of attention and they're going to catch details. I'm a visual, but I'm dyslexic. So I have a conflict of interest. That's the reason we have an and ban Vanessa to pick up on these slides and I didn't send them to them. That's the reason I have mistakes. Anyway, so the opposite, big ears. Big ears is about to listen of every word you says. They're going to be paying attention to the tone. If you says, um, if you ask them, how, how long is the warranty? The warranty? So the question at the end is going to be pick up with people who have big ears meaning that they're going to be listened to every word. People with big ears, they tend to not interrupt, interrupt a lot because they're paying attention. So if you have somebody with big ears and you're looking for more interaction, ask them if they have any question. One of the big takeaway from when you are talking with somebody with big ears, they need consistency. Consistency meaning that if you says white, you keep saying white every time. Now, if you change from white to black, you need to explain what has happened and you keep your consistency. People with big ears doesn't want to hear the ideas because when you come out with a different idea, they're going to think like, hmm, there is not consistency here. You told me A yesterday and you told me B today. So get your things together when you're talking with a person with big ears. Again, Ears is how we intake information. Now, how fast we intake in that information has to do with how high or low the ears are. In this case, we know it's a person with small ears, is visual. In another way, he, the way he intake information is really fast. So how we determine this? Can you see where the ears, the, the eyes end? I draw a line. The ear is above that line, meaning that this person has high ears. And again, everything is proportional to your face. If you put my nose and somebody else, maybe it's a big nose. In my case, it's a small nose. And by the way, nose, um, nose has to do with emotion and our buying pattern. And that is one of the things. 
we teach to sales reps to pay attention on the notes, but because here is the reason why you can sell someone really fast or not. Again, we're talking about high ears, low ears. In this case, the person have high ears, meaning there is going to be processing information really super fast. So if you tell a story and you go to lawn and you explain like, tell me what we need to do and we do it. Now, the person who have low ears, who would it be if we draw that line and the ears get either on the border of the low is low ears. In my case, I have low ears, meaning that you need to repeat the information because they're going to take longer to do it. Good thing with e big ears, high ears, I'm sorry, is that they're going to be processing information really fast. The problem with high ears is that maybe they're not going to remember all the information because their process is so fast, they tend to lose information on the middle. Let's see if we have more questions. No. So another thing, when you have low ears, are going to take more time to get information. So ask me if I didn't understand any of the point. Uh, people with low ears tend to read books more than once, taking class more than once, and they like to be surrendered by others to absorb information. High ears are really good for sales if you know how to approach to them. Why? Because they is do it now. High ears is do it now. Low ears is I going to take my time because I want to do it right. Now, we're going to talk about eyebrows. And eyebrows are the way that we process information. So now we have the information. You give it to me, the information. Now I have my big antenna or small antenna who take the information. Now we need to process the information. This is the intel of your brain. So you have, again, a lot of things that you can read on uh, eyebrows. I always says, if I can read your ears, your eyebrows, and your fo forehead, I don't need to read anything else. If I need to communicate with you, all the things that are not covered on the face are the things that I need to you. The only things that are covered by a mask are the ways that you communicate with me. But if I am a manager, I have co-workers or I'm a sales rep or in a relationship, one thing that is important is not what I'm saying, it's how I say it to you, it's how I make you feel. Warren Buffett and Maya Angelou says the same phrase in a different way, but basically is people is not going to remember what you do, people is not going to remember what you says, but people is going to remember how you make them feel. So if I know how you need to intake information and I know how you process information and I deliver it to you in that way, hello, now we have a relationship. So we're going to talk about shapes. <coughs> so shape of the eyebrows, why is so important to understand and how I will I would talk to this gentleman? We have three shapes of eyebrows, round, straight, and pointy. How do I determine when an eyebrow is round, straight, or pointy? In this case, the way I do it, Elva do three points. I do five because I always recall myself and I'm a perfectionist, so I don't like to have readings done wrong. And when you start practicing, you can do this in and, 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 and real life, believe me, I do that. Actually, I like more to have somebody in front of me than a picture because when the face, face mood, a move, I can see wrinkles who are another way to read faces. You have three things that you can read in a face. You can read the shape of the features. You can read this, the size of the features and you can read the wrinkles and where there are possess the, in your face. Why wrinkles are important and why we read wrinkles. When you do something often, those things get in your face. If you have done botox, botox, I still can see some lines in your face and they're not gonna change until you don't change internally. We have three faces. One is the one we was born with. The second one is the, we, the one we have either for an accident or something that happened. And the third one is the one that we project 
to others. So if you make any change on your face or you do makeup in your face as a woman or as a man to change anything in your face, do you know what's happened? It's because that change is done internally. And again, I'm gonna give the example. I tattoo my eyebrows in a different way than I have it when I was 20 and 30 and the hair grow on top of the tattoo. It wasn't anything chemical, I didn't do anything. I just was projecting to my face what my brain was telling me. What happened with pointy eyebrows? Um, I have pointy eyebrows, I kind of will see. And I wanna be right fact based in facts and data. I review absolutely everything. You can see on my back, this is not to be cocky, but, but this is part of my library. I have hundreds of audiobooks in my, in, in my phone. I like to read books more than one time. If I need to go buy a car, I'm gonna go through online and I found everything about that. Whatever, if you try to sell to someone with pointy eyebrows, be ready because this person is gonna have all the research done on you, the product, on the company. This is not people that is easy to intimidate. Probably they're gonna intimidate in you. Why? Because they are gonna have all the information. Round, round eyebrows are people, per, people, people. They like people, plants, animals are more concerned about their surroundings. People with straight eyebrows are people who are more in facts and data. But the example that we're gonna talk today is pointy eyebrows. Uh, we're gonna go every Friday reading different faces. And again, if you have anyone that you want us to read, Please let us know, just send us an email. We're gonna go from the ones who are the most. Again, next week, we're gonna be doing the CDC director and how to know when somebody's keeping secret. And we're not only gonna show how he's keeping a lot of secrets, it's how the keeping secret is affecting that person because it has to do with the right brain, who is your personal life. Your left brain is your business side. Even though he's keeping a lot of secrets on his business life, his personal life is getting smacked by what the secrets he's keeping. So go back to eyebrows, pointy eyebrows. They wanna be right based on knowledge. Uh, they tend to be bo bossy. A way to approach to a person that is your boss, your coworker and a sales meeting or in a relationship, tell them you're right. One of the tricks that I teach to people in sales when you have somebody with pointy eyebrows, at the end, when you need to do the call of action, when you need to close the sales, says, like, as you say. So even though it's your idea, make the other person with pointy eyebrows think the final idea, the final product has to do with something they need to do. You know what my team does? I says, like, blah, 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 blah. After that, they do whatever they want. He says, yes, boss, and they move on. They're right. I go all over the place and they decide what to do. The other thing that we're gonna be talking about is proxemic. Edward Halls on the 60s wrote a book about proxemic. Proxemic is the, the distance, physical distance that you have between yourself and others. In the United States, we have this physical distance beside the distance that we need to have today that is six feet apart is how is the distance between one arm leg, two arm leg, or two near? You can determine if somebody in an office and an environment, they have a relationship, because for example, when they put the hand on the lower back, how low they put the hand, you know how intimate they are. Now, even though in a phone call or in a video call, you can determine what is the proxemic of the person, meaning how friendly and how you need to approach them based on the distance between the eyelid and the eyebrow. In this case, we're gonna talk about low proxemic. This person have a low proxemic. Did you see the short distance between the eyelid and the eyebrow? Um, this picture was bring to you because we did a study on this face on our Facebook group. I think that we read, I think it was, it was almost an hour and a half 
all the things that we read on this person only by this picture. It's the same picture that we use on our Facebook group. So if you want to be part of the Facebook group and you want to know how uh, an hour and a half reading can happen with only this picture and how you can do more reading and participate with other people, we're talking about face reading, we're talking about microexpression, body language, uh, a statement content analysis, forensic analysis, personality types, and whatever you want to bring to the table. Sometimes people bring cases with clients and we go through that and we having a lot of fun. So low proxemic. This person is going to tend to interrupt you a lot. People who have low proxemic, what happened, and in this case, this guy is have a like laser machine and I'm going to put everything together at the end, how you shoot a pro then, is that his mind is going to be interrupting. So this is the kind of person who is going to be interrupting you when you're given an explanation, like what is the next question? What is the next? What is the next? The next, the next, the next. What happened is they are finishing your, their, your thoughts and their own head. Why? Because they process information really fast too. <coughs> this is a completely left brain. That would happen when you speak all week. So he's going to interrupt. If this person doesn't interrupt you verbally, they're going to interrupt you mentally. What do you mean? Um, if you have just to happen, having low proxemic, have you ever been in a meeting where like a person is talking and you tilt the head and says like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and you're thinking what you need to do la later? That is the way you interrupt. You can interrupt verbally and can you interrupt mentally? People with low proxemic is going to tend to interrupt. Don't take it personally. If you're preparing a speech for sales, dating, or manage, managing with a person with low proxemic, remember this. Every topic that you talk on says, says, do you have any questions? It is anything that you want me to explain. We talk about this with uh, pointy eyebrows too. So that's where we start doing what we call in the trilogy of personality. That's why one of the things that you cannot learn from a book, from all the things that I have learned in behavior, is face reading and linguistic analysis. Why? Because you can read every day, but in the point to put it together, you need to make mistakes, you need to talk to people and to understand. At the end of the day, after so many years to do it, I even do have certain features that I never saw in any book, that I never learned from any teacher. I learned it from reading so many people over these years, and I've been testing it. For example, if you're at Twitter at 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, if you're not going to believe me when I start talking to you only because I'm saying I'm good or I'm an expert on what I do, I need to prove you that I'm good and on that. I didn't find that in any book. You know that for interacting, for made a mistake, that is the best way to learn, and for talking to people. So that's one of the things that instead to me talking to a monitor, we have a more interactive class and says, yep, round eyebrows. I prefer animals to people. Thank you, Christine. We're going to go to run uh, round eyebrows in some point. So Christine on our, our YouTube channel says, uh, yes, round eyebrows. I prefer animals and people. Christine, let me know. Uh, you are, when the offices were open, you were the one who was first on the cooler, on the kitchen on Mondays, 9 a.m. to asking everyone how it was the weekend. You are the one who knows what everybody's birthday are, um, how they doing, how many kids they have. You let, you know what is the name of the dog, of the parent, of everyone. Christine, if you can tell me that on the, on the, on the Facebook, I will appreciate it a lot. Let's see if we still live on the other, um, on the other uh, things and like, yeah, we are live and all, all of them. So we have Bryce, you're right. Okay, let's see. I, it's good to see you, Susan. It's good to see you, Bryce. He just ate a few too many cookies and had a bad day, days in the road. Um, I don't know what you're talking about, Mark, but let me know what happened. <laughs> Uh, what is the topic that you're talking about? Let's see if we're missing any questions in all the channels. Where are we? Are? Oh, in Facebook. You see? <laughs> That's happening when you're tired. So let's see. 
if we are missing any questions in Facebook. Vanessa says, hello. I have round eyebrows. We know, Vanessa, you're all heart. You're all emotions. You're an emotional person. That's the reason we love you. Anyway, let's go back to proxemic. So when you're talking with a person with low proxemic, remember, they're going to interrupt, make them part of the situation. Don't take it personal. Um, I have meetings weekly with a team that one of the person have a really, really low proxemic. So I get in my head before we get in the meeting, Susan, it is not personal. It's not about you. It's about the person. You need to, instead to go forward and fast on the explanation, you need to slow down and ask questions after each topic. And one of the things the person says like, okay, I got it, got it, got it. What happened is I got it, I got it, is that after that, I need to be sending an email. Why? Again, we're going to start putting everything together at the end. Forehead. Who says that you cannot read forehead from a picture? Can you see the forehead? It's flat. It's a straight, square, flat. Meaning that is like an engineer. He's going to be straight arrow. If I have a problem and I need someone who makes sure that is going to come up with ideas that are doable, is going to get it done, and is going to make sure that he go forward, this is the kind of person that you need to go for. Uh, if I need a first responder, this is going to be a good person too. Now, flat forehead, what it meant? It meant that it's like an engineer brain. They're going to look for a structure. They're going to look for how to ensemble things. I always give the same example, but it's like the IKEA furniture. If you give this person IKEA furniture, they're going to open the box, really delicate it. They're may going to make sure they're not ruining anything. They're going to open the box. They're going to put all the pieces on the floor, and they're going to grab the manual. And they're going to check that everything that needs to be done before it's done it's on the play and they're going to follow structures. So if this is one of your customers, you need to tell them and how to follow uh, to do things. So this is good people to close a meeting with a call of action. If you don't close a meeting with this kind of person with a call of action, what is going to happen is they're not going to feel they have the instructions they need to follow in order to complete what they do it. Uh, let's see if I'm missing any questions before we go. Uh, yeah, Vanessa is laughing. Yeah, yeah, we know you. Okay, in LinkedIn, uh, I don't know if I'm missing any questions in YouTube. Uh, Christine says, LOL. Yes, first in the office too. Correct, Susan. I like making others' day better. Uh, I know. The funny part is you can know these two. That's what I'm saying. Uh, these mini classes is to help you to understand others when you don't have the chance to be in front of them. And Christine uh, and it says, where are you in Facebook? What the name of the group? Oh, I'm going to I'm going to post it again so nobody miss it. Don't worry. I'm going to give again uh, the how you can contact us and the name of the Facebook group. We're going live today. I was supposed to be um, postponed it for something but I choose like, OK, we're going to keep it 5 p.m. It's every Friday, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we're talking with the group to see if we change the day and the time for the different time zones. But I have people who have told me, I wait for Friday nights to have a glass of wine and watch the class and see you all interact. Now, for the people who was asking for the Facebook group, here is where you can find us. Um, this is the part where you can do questions. This is the way that you can contact us for training or question if you have media inquires or booking this is the phone number where you can find us this is the places where you can learn with us humanbehaviorhackerschool.com or if for consulting you can go to humanbehaviorlab.com and that's where you will ask in the facebook group the group is hbh school meaning human behavior hacker school again the group is hbh school 
in Facebook. And we are live here every Friday, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can find us in Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube. I'm going to stop sharing and go back to... Um, hey, we have Alma. Elba. Why I always say Alma to you instead to Elba? Okay, you're mute. Unmute your mic. I, now, I'm here. <laughs> you know what? I keep telling you, uh, Alma, the funny part is we have somebody on the team called Alma. Um, Alma Elba. Like, I don't know if it's like distracted, dyslexia. I don't know what happened. So what do you think about the picture? How would you approach someone? By the way, for the ones who doesn't know, Elba Rive is uh, our, the CEO of our Latin American office. They have a short uh, of electrical, so she was like crazy oh, because yeah. she couldn't connect. And she is the head of trainer uh, training on Latin America and Spanish. And she did an amazing podcast this week that we're going to be sharing on the weekend. They were ballistic. Elba, how will you communicate with someone with low proxemic, small ears, high ears, pointy eyebrows. I call them when I train sales reps and like, that is the easiest sell you're going to have in your life if you know how wow. to do to. it. What do you think? Yeah, I think the same. If if I have to sell something for uh, to this person, first of all, I have to, ha I, I need all the information the important information because I I have to to give him really fast because if he says yes, I have to to do the call of action so he can buy the product because he is the one that if he says yes he's going to buy it in the moment because he wants things in the moment. So I think in that part we need to be aware of that because he knows about the product he all, he already know about everything. So the information that I have to give him, it's the really important the things that he 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 can process because he's doing he's going to process really fast and give him the steps to do the call of actions. So if he says yes, just stop, do the call of action because he's going to buy it. Yeah, for the people, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we have people asking for the Facebook group. I posted. I'm going to post it again. Uh, that's the Facebook group. Uh, you can, if you jump right now, maybe you can make it to the class today. Today, we're going to be talking more about uh, reading faces with masks. Um, Elba, uh, what, how many things and important things you can read in a face, even with mask? It's around the 70, 75% you can read in the face, even they have a mask. You can read ears eyebrows, forehead, even the um, the wrinkles that we have in the forehead, proxemic. So we had a lot of things. And instead of that, we, we can know about the ears, for example, the shape, the the height, the, um, the size. So it's we have a lot of things. Even the eyebrows, just the eyebrows, we, ha we can have a lot of things just in the eyebrows. We, ca we have, if it's... Uh, if it's high or low, the proximity, the um, the shape, the size. So I think it's the amount of hair that you have in your eyebrows. That means something too. So it's a lot of things you can know about a person, even if they have a mask. Yeah, I'm, I'm just getting in all the channels and make people uh, know what is the Facebook group. We have people asking. So I'm going to make sure that I'm not missing anyone. So we are in YouTube. <laughs> are we located? I'm getting distracted. Sorry, my apologies. So yeah, it's a lot. So how, how you would approach this person in sales, love, and as a manager? And I always said the same. Your people job is not to understand you. Your job is to understand your team. So let's put first, you're going to sell to this person. You're going to have a love relationship with this person, or you're going to need to work with this person. How will you talk to this person in a meeting to make sure the person have what you need to get? Okay. First, first of all, this is the kind of person that he needs to have the agenda. He needs to have the time. 
if you have if you want to have a meeting with him you have to give me how much it's going to to be the meeting the agenda that you have to that you have to they are going to have so we have that's the first step because he needs the steps why because he needs to know what is going to happen next so after that you have to be really direct really you don't have to tell them that story the whole story because he is going to get lost he is the kind of person that says okay just i need it now just i want the results i want it now and i want to see how 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 it's going to be the results so i think in that part you have to be you have to take um you have to take care about the information that you are going to give him you you have to take about you have to take care about um the time that he needs to be with you and another thing i i think this is it's crazy because be patient and prepare for everything for questions because this is the kind of guy that he needs information. He loves knowledge and he he is the kind of person that he will ask you something. If he doesn't have it clear, he will ask you. So I think it's it's, it's the way that we can approach him. Yeah, we haven't, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, it's not distracted. Uh, we haven't okay. questions and uh, everybody who knows me know that I have like four monitors and three computers like <laughs> hyper connected. Yeah. So that is what is happening. Uh, we having questions in all the places. So I hope that everybody have the Facebook group. Uh, we are over the time. Sorry, Elba, we didn't have you in the beginning, but remember, I'm gonna share the screen again. I'm gonna share two screens that I think the people have been asking for is like how to contact us again. Uh, this is the way to contact us. This is the plain, uh, the plain presentation. And next week, uh, uh, Elva, wow. how, okay, you can say it because people is not going to believe me. What time we ended up our meeting last night only to having fun 12? reading this guy's face? 12, no. I think? No. It was, uh, for me, it was 12.45. Oh, yeah. Almost one. Yeah. It's oh. amazing. Yeah. Uh, Elva and I and, and all the team, we were going through this. Uh, okay. I uh, got the wrong slides. Here we go. Next week, we're going to be talking about Robert Redfield. We're going to show you how you can spot with somebody is withholding information. Again, face reading cannot tell you if somebody's lying. But if I know for one thing in your face that you tend to withhold information, I know that there are three ways you lie for omission, by embellishment, or uh, deviating the truth so how to know if somebody is going to be lying by omission that's it's something that you can read on the face i do have the same lines on my on, on my face this guy have no as big as they have he have it and i had it in my personal life and i have it in my business life why because for 18 years, my job was to be hiding, is what not to be seen. I work in political campaigns and be shh, not telling what I do is what it was making me good in my job. And to have this creation and what we do is part of what we need. But the size of that feature this guy have is freaked out. Actually, all the team were online and we spent like, I would say 45 minutes looking for pictures and we have so many pictures to share next week. I don't know how we're going to put it together. But if you want to start learning things on the features on the face that can help you to go through, let me know. Um, let us know who do you want us to read? Because the fun part is whatever we read, we're still going to do it. But it's about serving you, helping you to have better relationship, to know who is behind the mask who is behind the face who is the person behind that face with mask or without mask it's something that you need to learn remember humans we are better reading people than any other machine in the world from mm -hmm. all the things that ai can do this cannot be done by a machine the same way analyzing linguistic elva are we missing anything before we say until next friday nope
just don't forget to be here next Friday. I think this is going to be great. Yeah, and I see already three people who are uh, on the new Facebook group. So for whoever else in the Facebook group, I'm going to take an hour to unwind. I need to write my emails and I see you for the practice. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Elba, for being here. And again, next week is going to be mind blowing. So I would advise you to get the reminder. We're just going to be publishing right now. Thank you very much, Elba. See you next Friday. See you. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. For and so thank you, Susan. I took a look of notes, great uh, info. Yeah, I know, Errol, you're always taking a lot of notes. Any of our uh, live or recording is to take notes. So advice, every time that you see Human Behavior Lab or Human Behavior Hacker School, Elva Reves, Susan Iwitz, get a notepad. It's something that you're always going to learn. Yes. Captain, see you next.